Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today in this episode of VIT Triple E Questions with Solution, we are discussing some questions which were asked in VIT Triple E 2013. So these are mathematics questions and today we're going to be looking at these questions and their solutions in detail. So let's start with our first question. The centers of a set of circles, each of radius 3 centimeters, lie on the circle x squared plus y squared equals 25. The locus of any point in the set is. So, so basically we have a set of circles which encircle this large circle and the equation for that is x squared plus y squared equals 25. So 25 is the same thing as 5 squared, so therefore x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared. So from here we can get that the radius of the larger circle is 5 centimeters. Now we will have a set of smaller circles, so there can be any of those smaller circles. And their centers are on the circumference of the larger circle. And these circles have a radius which we can represent a small r as equal to 3 centimeters. So we need to find out the locus of any point in the set of these circles is. So let's take the center of the larger circle as O, the center of the smaller circle as C. Now the locus of any point on the set can be calculated by finding the distance OP, where P is any point on the smaller circle. Now, we can take A and B as the points on the diameter of the smaller circle, where the diameter is concordant with the distance between O and C. So, in this setup, we can understand that the value of OC is equal to capital R, which is 5 centimeters. And the values of AC and BC are the same, which is 3 centimeters. Now, in order to find the locus of the point, we will understand that the, this point, that is P, can be in any of the points that are present between the diameter A B. So the distance of the point can have a minimum value of O A and it is usually represented as X squared plus Y squared and under root of X squared plus Y squared and then the maximum distance can th that this can achieve will be O B. So OA can be written as OC minus AC, and that will be lesser than under root of X squared plus Y squared, and OB can be represented as OC plus BC. So OC is 5, AC is 3, so 5 minus 3 is less than or equal to under root of X squared plus Y squared, which is less than or equal to 5 plus 3. So that means 2 is less than or equal to under root of x squared plus y squared, which is lesser than or equal to 8. And now what we do is we square all sides. So we will get 2 squared as 4, less than or equal to x squared plus y squared, less than or equal to 8 squared, which is 64. So this relation will be the correct relation in order, in order to represent the locus of any point in the set. So if you were to look at the following options, among the four options you can see that option A, 4 less than x squared plus y squared less than 64 will be the correct answer. Now let's look at the next question. A tower, which is AB, leans towards the west making an angle of alpha with the vertical. The angular elevation of beta, the topmost point is an angle beta as observed from a point C due east of A at a distance D from A. If the angular elevation of B from the point D due east of C at the distance 2D from C is gamma, 
then we need to find the value of 2 tan alpha. So this is a sample diagram for the same. So AB represents the tower. So the angle beta is the angle which is subtended by the segment CB with the origin, I mean with C. And then DB, the angle gamma, is what is the angle is known as the angle ADB. So we can now define the angles here. So angle beta refers to angle BCA. Angle, you know, pi by 2 minus alpha is angle BAL. And angle gamma is angle ADB. Now, the distance AC is d centimeters, and the distance CD is 2d. So CD can also be written as AC plus AD which can also be written as D plus AD. So that is 2D, so therefore the value of AD will also be D centimeters. And also the height of the building, we can suppose the height of the building BL as equal to a height H. So now we will try to find out the value of 2 tan alpha. How do we express 2 tan alpha correctly? So in the triangle BLC, so that is this triangle on the left. So in this triangle BLC, we can find the value of cot beta as the adjacent side divided by the opposite side. So that in this case is LC divided by BL. So therefore LC is equal to BL cot beta, but since we know the value of BL as H, you can write H cot beta as the value of LC. Similarly, in triangle ABL, so in triangle ABL, that is this triangle, we have the angle pi by 2 minus alpha, so once again we can write cot of pi by 2 minus alpha as equal to AL, which is the opposite side, I mean, which is the adjacent side, divided by BL, which is the opposite side. So therefore, AL equals cot, I mean, BL times cot of pi by 2 minus alpha. Now, BL can be written as H, and cot of 90 minus theta is always tan theta, so AL can be written as H times tan alpha. So that is also an important relation. Now, in this triangle, AC is equal to AL plus LC. You will get the value of AC that is D centimeters as equal to H tan alpha plus H cot beta. Now let's look at another, let's look at another triangle, which is in this figure, which is triangle BLD. Now in the triangle BLD, we have the angle gamma, and the cot value of gamma can be taken as the opposite side, I mean, sorry, the adjacent side LD, divided by the opposite side BL. So therefore, now you get LD is equal to BL cot gamma, which is H cot gamma. And if you were to look at the figure, you will guess that the that AD, the distance, can be written as LD minus LA. So. AD equals LD minus LA. So therefore, LD is H cot 
Al, I mean, H cot gamma, and Al is H cot, I mean, sorry, it's not H cot, it's H tan alpha. And the value of AD, we have already determined that to be D centimeters. So now from both these relations, we get H tan alpha plus H cot beta as equal to H cot gamma minus H tan alpha. So we can drop all the H's off. Since H is common in both the sides, we can cancel that out. And tan alpha, we take the minus tan alpha to the left-hand side, so you get 2 tan alpha, which is the value that we're looking for. And when we take cot beta to the other side, you will get cot gamma minus cot beta. So therefore, this is the correct relation that we're looking for. So the representation, so the relation of that says 2 tan alpha equals cot gamma minus cot beta is the correct relation for this question. So in this question, the correct option is option D, cot gamma minus cot beta. So over here, we are using trigonometric ratios in order to find out the correct value of 2 tan alpha. So let's look at the final question of this episode. If alpha and beta are roots of the quadratic equation x squared minus ax plus b equals 0, and the relation v of n is equal, and the value of v of n is alpha raised to n plus beta raised to n, then which of these relations are correct? So we have four options. Let's start solving the question. So now we know that x squared minus ax plus b is equal to zero. This is given. So what we're going to do? We're going to multiply by x raised to n minus one. And why do we do that? The reason why we're doing that is when we multiply by x raised to n minus one, x squared times x raised to n minus one gives you x raised to n plus 1 minus x times x raised to n minus 1 gives you x raised to n, so you get minus a x raised to n, and then plus b times x raised to n minus 1, and that is equal to 0. So we have converted the quadratic equation to an equation which involves x raised to n plus 1, x raised to n, and x raised to n minus 1. Now, we know that alpha and beta are the roots of x squared minus ax plus b. So therefore, they will satisfy the equation that we just got, which is equation 1. So now if we, if we were to solve it using alpha, f of alpha will be equal to alpha raised to n plus 1 minus a alpha raised to n plus b alpha raised to n minus 1. And this we can write as equation 2. With beta, you will get a new equation. So equation 3 will be b raised to n plus 1 minus a b raised to n plus b raised to plus b times beta raised to n minus 1. And that is option 3, I mean, sorry, equation 3. So now we know equations 2 and 3. And both of those values are going to be equal to 0 because the right hand side is always 0. So on adding equations 2 and 3, we get alpha raised to n plus 1 plus beta raised to n plus 1 minus a alpha raised to n minus b alpha raised to n plus b alpha raised to n minus 1 plus b alpha raised to n minus 1. And that is equal to 0 on the right-hand side. So now let's take things common. So alpha raised to n plus 1 plus beta raised to n plus 1 minus a gets common. Minus a is taken common out. So you get alpha raised to n plus beta raised to n plus b times. So here b is common. So then alpha raised to n minus 1 plus beta raised to n minus 1. And that is equal to 0. So... <laughs> Over here, the equation that we have in the question, that is alpha raised to n plus beta raised to n, can be represented as v of n. 
can be extended to n plus one terms and n minus one terms as well. So therefore, using alpha raised to n plus beta raised to n as equal to vn, you will get the first term of the equation as v raised v of n plus one, and then minus a times v of n plus b times v of n minus one, and that is equal to zero. So therefore, you'll get v of n plus one as equal to a times v of n minus v b times v of n minus one. So this is the correct relation. So option, so the correct option will be the option which says v of n plus one is equal to a times v of n minus b times v of n minus one. So therefore option A will not be correct. Option B is also incorrect. Option D is also incorrect. The correct option is option C. So in option C, you can see we have the same result as we have achieved by, you know, solving the equation within, within the question. So option C is the correct option for this question, which was asked in 2013. So that concludes this episode of VIT Triple E Questions with Solutions. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our episodes, you can always subscribe to our channel, which is Brain Blitz Audios, to get more to get more from VITE preparation material, you can always hit the playlist in the description box down below. For receiving update ab updates about our latest content, you can hit the bell icon, which is again present below the video. So until the next webisode, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.